morning. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, looks like we have enough people to populate a whole commercial car. Um, and th thank you, Andy. I'm, I'm not a, a legend yet. I think I'm still alive. Um, I, I'm Inga Saffron. I, I, do, I write a weekly column for the Philadelphia Inquirer. It appears on Fridays. And I just, um, it was nice of Andy to mention this piece. I, I just had a, a new Republic online because um, I'm going to be doing a monthly column for them figure out how to manage my time. Um, but anyway, um, I have a few slides, and I, um, I just wanted to give kind of a, a, a big, you know, 30,000 feet overview of a way of thinking about commercial corridors. Um, I think we have a really fixed idea in our minds of what a commercial corridor should be. Like, maybe that image comes from some point in the 40s before you know, cars took over and um, the whole world changed. Um, and I just wanted to point out that commercial corridors are always in a state of flux. So I wanted to start with this image. Um, I was wondering if there's anyone in the room who, who, who could identify. Uh, this is a local place. Um, from, and this, I guess, must be mid-century, mid late 19th century. Anybody know where it is? Uh, not quite. <coughs> slide is that? <laughs> not my slide. Anyone recognize that place? <laughs> That's the King of Prussia Mall, and, and the, uh, the first image was, was King of Prussia before it was a mall. Uh, so it was a very, very small commercial corridor, and, and you know, mall isn't quite a commercial corridor, but it's a version uh, of it. And, you know, that little place became this, and uh, there's been a lot of talk that malls are not going to really survive, so maybe this, this won't be around forever. Um, so, this is uh, Gimbel's on Market Street. It's now a surface parking lot at 8th and, 8th and Market. Um, it's from a time when Market Street was just lined with department stores and was a, a very, very vibrant commercial corridor, but it, it too changed, and it's still changing. And, and this is an image of a casino that's been proposed for the very same site, uh, 8th and Market, uh, designed by Enrique Norton, supposedly. Uh, so, um, this could change this corridor again, uh, and that's part of the, the flux. Um, this is the Italian market um, in the olden days, and uh, it too is a kind of commercial corridor that's, that's always changing. It used to be almost exclusively um, produce and, and um, meat and fish stores, but because people shop differently, it's changing. Um, been a little bit cleaned up, and, and there are now little cafes and, and bookshops and other kinds of uh, retail there because uh, the way we shop has changed so much that um, it can't really sustain, you know, the corner to corner produce and, and, and um, food food stores that it did in the past. Um, Philadelphia is a city of neighborhoods, and every neighborhood in Philadelphia seems to have a commercial corridor. And, and one of the points I wanted to make today is, um, because everything is in flux, that not all those corridors can be brought back to uh, this, this kind of mythical state we have in our minds, where this, every, every lot is full and the sidewalks are full of people. And I think that, um, it's important to have a conversation today, maybe, um, about making decisions on which corridors are salvageable and which aren't, and, and to have some kind of criteria for deciding where to make investments and, and where to put all your energies. Um, this is another uh, view of Market Street in the heyday, or um, just lined with uh, department stores and people and. Uh, commerce spilling onto the streets. Uh, and, and this is Germantown Avenue uh, from 1958, and also um, a much, much better time. Um, 
and this is Germantown Avenue more recently, and you can see uh, some of the shuttered shop fronts. Um, you know, these kind of commercial corridors came into being when uh, people really did shop locally. And, and of course that's changed. You know, you, you have cars, you can drive to the place you most want to shop at. Or you don't even have to drive because the internet is, is really reorganizing consumer life. And, and we've had to ask ourselves, um, what is, I think we need to ask ourselves, what is the role of the commercial street when you can order everything from food to film? online, another view of, um, of Germantown Avenue. Um, so you can, you can order everything online, and um, I think we're increasingly seeing a, a narrowing uh, of the types of retail that exist in bricks and mortar stores. And um, I'm very fond of this history by Daniel Borstein, this trilogy of American history, and in his 20th century, uh, book, he, he talks about um, uh, the repeatable experience, and I think um, the objects that are part of this repeatable experience are disappearing from our streets, things like CDs and books and stores that used to sell um, housewares, because they're just the same everywhere, and you can order them online. Um, and so it's harder and harder to get those kinds of shops. And, you know, do we really want commercial corridors that are all restaurants and hair salons, uh, which are places that can't be repeated online? And I, I, I think we have to talk about, you know, how, how to keep the, the diversity and variety of our commercial corridors. Um, and then the last point I wanted to make um, is about um, commercial corridors can't exist without uh, a dense population nearby. and. Um, in Philadelphia, we see way too many commercial corridors uh, where the upper floors are boarded up. And actually, that's why I wanted to show you this image, uh, because this was a this is a strategy you just recently completed strategy to to use a, a mural to to create identity for uh, Germantown Avenue and the section of Germantown Avenue uh, and try to get people to shop there again. But you can see that the upper floors are completely abandoned. And, and it's in a part of North Philadelphia that's lost 20% of its population. And, and I think very clearly um, retail follows population. So when you lose population, I think you, you're in danger of losing your, your, the viability of your commercial corridor. But um, anyway, so this report, which is quite old from the late 90s, was done by the Center, Center City District. And it was a, a plan to as it says, turn on the lights upstairs. And I, I think that's a really a crucial part of this discussion, is how to put pe people, residential, residents, on commercial corridors so that they remain viable. Um, well, thank you very much.